A warm welcome to Snetterton in Norfolk, where powerful, high-performance sports GT and touring cars are the order of the day. It's round nine of the Brick Car Endurance Championship. After two incident field races last time out, the championship has been blown wide open. Chris Hartley goes through some of the talking points from Alton Park. The first race of the weekend started with a bang, literally as Craig Dolby's Riley made contact with the Mosler of Manuel Centrano on the run into Turn 1. Centrano and a luckless Mike Millard making heavy impact with the barriers at Old Hall Corner. The race was stopped while the incident was attended to. Happily, both drivers walked away, a testament to the strength and safety of modern-day race cars. On the restart, the Riley led from Callum Lockie, Gautam Singhania, Jamie Smith and Frank Pell in the Simpson Motorsport Audi, but it wasn't long before there was more drama. Smith losing control of the Ultima in a big way. With significant damage to the car and the chassis, it looked like this crash would put the Ultima not out only for the weekend, but for the rest of the season. Alton Park wasn't just about big crashes though, there was some great racing on track, including this battle between Lockie and Pell for the Class 2 lead. In a season plagued by technical gremlins, Jensen Motorsport suffered another retirement in the Chevron GT3. The resulting safety car bad news for FF Course, as David Mason was caught out and then passed by several cars late on. After some mid-race issues, Craig Dolby and Nigel Mustill had to settle for second place in the Riley, while Peter Cook and Frank Pell celebrated their first outright win of the season. Neil Garner Motorsport managed to repair the Mosler for race two. It even qualified on the front row behind the Audi. Further back, though, Gautam Singhania spanned his Ferrari 458 after trying to squeeze inside Callum Lockie through Old Hall, eventually recovering to finish fifth. Having got their Chevron back up and running, Jensen Motorsport were hoping for a change of fortune, but things were about to get a lot worse. Alistair Lindsay suffering a huge impact after the back end of the car went light over the crest of Clay Hill. Alistair had to be airlifted out of the circuit, though thankfully his injuries weren't as bad as first feared. Upon the restart, Frank Pell was passed by the Mosler of Javier Mothio, though the Audi would retain the Class 2 lead to the flag ahead of Callum Lockie's Ferrari. The overall victory, though, went to Mothio and Thintrano. A remarkable turnaround and a much-needed race win to keep their championship hopes alive. Following an eventful weekend, then the standings are now led by Mason and Lockie, five points ahead of Morthio and Thintrano, with Guillaume Grouchet in third. But while Lockie and Mason lead the standings, the kings of qualifying are Morcillo and Cintrano with no fewer than five pole positions so far this season. But will the Moser be at the head of the pack for a sixth time at Snetterton? Chris takes a look back at qualifying. With the car now looking a little different following a proper rebuild by the Neil Garner squad between rounds, Manuel Centrano is finding his feet in the Mosler, running in a fairly modest seventh place halfway into the 30-minute qualifying session. Having upgraded to an FF course run 458, Darren Nelson managed to set the fourth fastest time in the Carnell Racing Ferrari, just behind Class 2 rival Callum Lockie, the three-time Brick Car champion driving solo this weekend. After missing both races at Alton due to the damage incurred in that first corner shunt, Mike Millard was back and looking good, propelling his Rapier Sports prototype to second place midway into qualifying. How are you feeling after the shunt? Are you feeling any nerves, any apprehensions about getting back in the car? Um, I find myself very nervous driving on, in the road, you know, on a road car. But when you're out here, you just forget everything. Yeah. Um, Got a bit of a neck ache, but the, we tested yesterday. We finished the car actually here yesterday, and they let us do a few laps uh, at the end of the uh, uh, testing. And uh, we've had a few issues, but now it's gone back together. I mean, David, the mechanic, works on flat out on it. Um, it's got a new gearbox, new wing, new this, new that. But it's been hard to get all the bits because they're all one-offs. But everybody helps, and uh, luckily we're back. Setting the pace in the first half of qualifying was this radical RXC, making its brick car debut. Powered by a 3.7-litre V6 engine, the car was being driven by Rob Weldon and James Abbott. Fastest in Class 3 for the less powerful cars, Kevin Clark and Anna Valeska, the Class Points leaders, in their V8-powered Intersport BMW. Second quickest was ex-British GT racer Zoe Wenham in Stephen Fressel's Ginetta G55. And third quickest in class were Alistair Lindsay and Jensen Lunn, the Jensen Motorsport pairing driving their brand new Ginetta G55 following that huge crash in the Chevron at Alton. So we're out in a Ginetta now. The other car was written off completely, so we decided that the building and trying to actually do it during the course of the season was just 
bit too much and uh, obviously I was lucky to walk away uh, or be flown away but to still be here. The new Janetta is awesome, sticks to the road like glue. Um, we're only a couple of seconds off the pace of the other cars that have been running for years, so it's really exciting times ahead. It was a pleasant surprise to see the return of the Mac G Racing Ultima following their huge crash in the last round, and the car was running well, posting the fifth fastest time in qualifying. Yeah, at Ultima, we uh, had a bit of an incident on the second corner after the restart, so I think it was uh, a driver error on behalf of the other driver, uh, and he just gave it too many beans and spun and hit the barrier. 80 odd miles an hour backwards, so we had a lot of damage to the gearbox, the chassis, suspension, engine, so we've had a lot of work to get here. We had a bit of an incident yesterday when our rear wing failed, I think as a result of the crash at Alton. Um, so we've repaired it, but we're lacking a bit of downforce today at the moment, so we're, we're struggling a bit. With qualifying drawing to a close, Nigel Greensall hopped into the Carnell Racing Ferrari and moved up to third place with a time of 1 minute 51.5 seconds. Having set more pole position times than anyone this season, Javier Morthio looked like he was about to do it again when he completed the lap in just 1 minute 49.464 seconds. But he was then pipped by the radical Weldon and Abbott claiming pole for just six thousandths of a second around the Snetterton 300 circuit. In this kind of car it's very challenging because you've got um, lots of fast corners, a mixture of kind of medium and slow corners as well. Um, with some decent length straights, so with the mix of cars, it's going to be quite interesting. Um, I think we'll be fast in the middle of the track, um, but maybe lacking a little bit on the longer straights, so it'll be interesting racing it. Obviously, you've got to keep your powder dry, sitting alongside a very fast car, the Mosler. Um, it's a long race, so we've just got to just be consistent and uh, try not to make any mistakes. Confirmation of qualifying then, the closest session of the year so far, and with a Radical, a Mosler, two Ferraris, a Rapier, a Ginetta, an Ultima and a Porsche, an eclectic mix of cars in the first four rows of the grid. Here we go then, ready for the rolling start, on board with Darren Nelson, third on the grid. As the lights go out, the race gets underway. Look, a cracking start from Callum Lockie there. In the number 26 Ferrari, he's already through to third place. Who's going to get the lead, though? It'll be James Abbott in the yellow radical. And then Callum Lockie going straight through from fourth to second, ahead of Manuel Centrano in the Mosla, who's dropped to third, on board with Darren Nelson, who's in fourth place now as they break and turn into the sharp hairpin at Montreal. And then just behind him, fifth place, Nathan Freak. There's the Porsche of Guillaume Grouchet making a good start. Looking back from the Ultima of Johnny McGregor at the Class 3 battle being led at the moment by the Intersport BMW of Anna Valevska. Into Agostini, then the left-hander comes our race leader. We go back on now with Nathan Freak having a look to try and get past the Ferrari of Darren Nelson, which runs a little bit wide through the left-hander. On board with Nathan, he's got better run coming out of the corner. He out accelerates Darren, and the Ginetta comes through to pick up a position. So up to fourth place now for Nathan Freak, the former Formula Ford champion of Great Britain. Here's our race leader, James Abbott. There then is Callum Lockie in second. Manuel Fintrano in third, Nathan Freak fourth, Darren Nelson, then Mike Millard completing the top six. There we have the class three cars, and there's the number 29, Ginetta, the new car, with Jensen Lunn on board at the moment. Here then, down the long, long Bentley straight, we go on board with Nathan Freak as he pulls off another move to get ahead of Manuel Fintrano in the background. That looked like Mike Millard was about to pounce on Darren Nelson, and indeed, that's that synchronised overtaking there, the Ginetta and the Rapier both picking off moves. So Manuel Fintrano dropping back a little bit at the moment in the number two car, but the super quick Javier Morthio to get on board for the second part of the race. On board with Darren Nelson, likewise. He's got uh, his ultra-quick teammate, Nigel Greensaw, to get on board that car for the second part of the race. But Darren doing a good job. One of the uh, more amateur drivers in the field. The top two come through then, up to third place, as we've now seen, is Nathan Freak in the Ginetta. Looking back from Johnny McGregor as he comes back ahead now of the Porsche. Johnny in the Ultima lost a few places off the start, but now he's starting to pick them off again. Ahead of the Porsche he goes. There's our race leader through Montreal, Callum Lockie in the Ferrari, leading class two, of course. The championship leader having a great start to the race. And that's Mike Millard now up ahead, going at the inside of the Mosler. There's Guillaume Cruchet, who's just lost a place a couple of corners ago to the Ultima of Johnny McGregor. Top three then just starting to spread out a little bit. There is the open top uh, sports car of Mike Millard, the Rapier, running in fourth place. Then the Mosler in fifth, Darren Nelson down to sixth position now. And with not far behind him, Johnny McGregor in the ultimate. 
which, as he said at the top of the race, is lacking a little bit of downforce, but still making a reasonable start to proceedings. This very quick Radical RXC then run by Raw Motorsports. A couple of seconds clear the FF course Ferrari. The Ginetta starting to catch now. That Class 1 Ginetta being driven solo in this race by Nathan Freak and by the Start Racing Squad. Now, Baron Nelson, having lost a couple of places in the last two laps, is trying to gain one now as he gets onto the tail of the Mosler. Millard's gone through in fourth, and this is the battle for fifth place then. And there you can see the yellow Ultima of Johnny McGregor has caught up to the tail now of Darren Nelson as they make their way out through Nelson and towards Bombhole. Through this very quick right hander, even quicker is the corner which comes up. Corum, look at this. Absolutely nailed on through here as they go towards the final turn at Murray's. No problems for our race leader. That radical edging away now from Callum Lock, who's doing a good job to keep Nathan Freak at bay. Very similar lap times between the top four, with Millard going through then in fourth. It's all about, really, this battle for fifth place at the moment. The Mosler up ahead, running in fifth position, on board with the Ferrari of Darren Nelson. And he's lost a place there as the Ultima comes through. So Johnny McGregor picks up another place here on the run up the centre straight on the way into Rich's corner, looking back from his car now at Darren in that Ferrari. So Darren having a look to try and get the place back, maybe on the way into Montreal. It's a bit too far back, though. But hanging on to the tail of the Ultima. And now they're both going to go on the attack here and see if they can get past the Spaniards in the Mosler. The Neil Garner prepared car runs its way through the left-hander at Palmer. Onto the back straight then and towards Agostini. There in the background you can see Guillaume Grouchet has just lost touch a little bit with these cars now in the Porsche. Darren Nelson again had a little glance at the inside there on the way to the left hand to try and get a position back away from Johnny McGregor but for the time being he has to sit there in seventh place opening up the lead now is the former clubman's champion James Abbott from Lockie former British GT champion and there a former Ginetta and Formula Ford champion Nathan Freak in third place from a very experienced Mike Millard in fourth position there. We've still got this very tight battle for fifth place. There's less than a second covering these three cars. There is Darren Nelson in the Carnell Ferrari 458 onto the back straight, the Bentley straight, which is 900 metres long and thundering towards the S section. The left-hander at Brundle, the right-hander at Nelson. And here comes Johnny McGregor out of the slipstream. Through he goes, picking up a place on the Mosler. And that's Johnny now back up into the top five. Here they come then, McGregor in the Ultima in fifth place, then Trano in the Mosler, now down to sixth position and down to seventh place in the Ferrari is Darren Nelson. Time to catch our breath, but make sure you rejoin us for more race highlights in just a few minutes' time. Welcome back to Snetterton for our coverage of the Brick Car Endurance Championship. It's the ninth race of the season and time to hand back to our commentator, Chris Hartley, for more highlights. Coming down the Bentley straight then is our new race leader, Callum Lockie in the Ferrari. And just coming up to what's now second place is the number 12 Ginetta driven by Nathan Freak coming ahead of Mike Millard's rapier. And that's because the former race leaders are into the pits, I'm afraid. Rob Weldon and James Abbott out in the Radical RXC. Unfortunately, we had a little problem in qualifying after um, my quick lap. So yeah. we came in, we thought we'd fixed it, and obviously we haven't. So it's a small gear shift problem. But um, it's a new car, and we're here to test and see what does fail on it. And we've definitely found something. But no, fingers crossed, the guys will get it done, and we're hoping to get out for the last bit of this race just to see if we've cured it and uh, we'll go from there and unfortunately the bad luck continues for Johnny McGregor and the Mac G racing squad with their ultimate we made a good start um, got up to fifth um, I think the radical has some issues so we we're up to fourth and then uh, coming onto the home straight here we had a bit of a chassis failure again and drive shaft popped out of the upright made a bit of an awful noise but it, it hasn't made anything like as much of a mess as it did last time so we'll, we'll be out for race two. And here we see the cars which now run fourth and fifth after those two front runners dropped out of the race there is Darren Nelson in the Ferrari GT3, the 458 on the tail of Manuel Fentrana, which he's been for the whole race, but now he launches one down the inside on the way into Montreal. He just about makes it stick, and that was a lovely move from Darren 
to pick off the much more experienced Manuel Centrano to gain fourth place. And there's a spin for Guillaume Grouchet in the Porsche, the new Brink Trend Porsche, but he fires it up very quickly, gets going again. That's on the way to Montreal as well. And despite the spin, he's managed to retain his sixth place in the race. This is the class three battle then. And there is the number 36 car of Zoe Wenham ahead of this car, this new car driven by Jensen Lunt in their G55. So the battle of the Ginettas at the front of class three. And there is the team which leads the class three standings, but currently running in third place in the race at the moment within the class. It's the Intersport car driven at the moment by Anna Valevska. She's due to hand over to Kevin Clark for the second part of the race. And here we have the battle for the lead because Nathan Freak has now got himself onto the tail of Callum Lockie. And meanwhile, we've got a battle here for the lead of class three as well. Jensen Lunn has been chipping away and chipping away. And now he's onto the tail of the other Ginetta and in a position to pick up a toe, climbing uphill here along the center straight. The inside line is covered. He goes outside, he flicks it back to the inside here and Jensen goes for it. He's got it at the inside and he goes into the lead of class three. Fantastic stuff on their debut in that car after all their bad luck this year. The mandatory pit stops then, and some early stoppers, including Manuel Centrano in the Mosler. We've also got coming in the uh, Jensen Motorsport team. Alistair Lindsay's going to get into that one. There is the Intersport BMW, so Kevin Clark will replace Anna Valeska. And Nigel Greensaw stepping into Carnell Racing's new Ferrari 458. Oh, it's absolutely fabulous. Obviously, it's a different car than our usual car. We had a slight problem with the, with the, with the other one, so we've managed to uh, get hold of this one for the race. It's a GT3 version of the car that we've got, so it's a lot quicker. It's got more downforce, more power, different gearbox, I think, I'm told. I don't really do the detail. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's fabulous. It holds the road like glue. And we've got a fabulous time out there. Yeah, we were chasing all the different cars then. Managed to catch the Mosler and, and take him on one of the bends. But, yeah, we had, a, we had a fabulous time out there. I just handed over to Nigel. I've done all the hard work, as you'd expect. Always all the groundwork absolutely yeah and hand it over to the pro now so yeah we, 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 we I think we're doing all right there is the Intersport BMW the V8 powered car now being driven by the very quick very experienced Kevin Clark and not too far behind the number 29 Jetson Motorsport Ginetta now being driven by Alistair Lindsay recovering from that big big crash he had at Alton Park so the battle's still on for class three the battle's still very much on for the lead of the race these two have been tied together for about 10 or 15 minutes now Callum Lockie is still managing to fend off the class one car of Nathan Freak and there in third position is Mike Millard in the rapier on for a podium after missing both the races at Alton. And there is the Intersport BMW, and already Kevin Clark has gone through to second in class ahead of that Ginetta. We're on board now with Nathan Freak in second position in the race, and he's coming in for his mandatory pit stop. Now, the rules are that he'll have to make sure he sticks to the speed limit, which is 50 kilometers an hour here in the pit lane. It's a minimum pit stop time of 90 seconds from the time they cross the line and get into the pits to the time they go out of the pits. Callum Lockie then on his own for the time being in the lead of the race. This pit stop is going to be crucial. Fuel is going in. The engine has to be off. The driver has to be out of the car before they can do that. The team having to make sure they get it absolutely spot on. Callum Lockie then continuing to lead the race. He can choose when he comes into the pits because he's driving solo. As long as he does come in at some point in the race, back out of the pits comes Nathan Freak. But he stalled the car ever so slightly, ever so briefly on the exit. So he lost a maybe one or two seconds there, which could prove crucial given how close these two were all the way up until the pit stop. So Callum Lockie comes in now for his mandatory stop. And the 90 seconds begins, the fuel goes into the Ferrari. This car had picked up the lead of the race very briefly, Mike Millard, but he had a slow pit stop, so he's now going to be down in fourth place and up to third position then, Nigel Greensall in the Carnell 458 Ferrari. So Nathan Freak now has got a, a really push on these outlaps to try and do something about getting past Callum Lockie. The Class 1 car, Callum in the Class 2 car, but he's not been able to find a way past. He could do without any traffic, but he's going to get past this slower Ginetta on the straight, so that won't delay him. Is he going to get past before Callum Lockie comes out of the pits? The answer is no. Lockie comes out, and Callum's going to hold the lead. There is Nigel Greensall going around the outside of him, but that's not for the lead of the race. That's just to make sure he stays on the same lap. So that's the third place car passing, and there is the Ginetta in second position. And the gap, as you can see, has opened up probably really down to that brief stall. The Radical's gone back out, which is good news, with another race to come here at Snetterton. So Rob Weldon and James Abbott continuing to test this very quick sports car.
Meanwhile, here we have the battle for class three. Out swings the BMW, draws alongside. He charges past on the way into Rich's corner, and that's Kevin Clark moving ahead of Stephen Fressel. And they're on for their first class three win of the year if they can just stay in front. Meanwhile, that's the rapier slowing down. Again, problems for Mike Millard in that rapier, which is so quick, but unfortunately has also been a little bit unreliable over the last couple of years. Nathan Freak then in second place, and he might have to settle for that. He's still going to win his class, though, but he can't, it seems, catch the Ferrari of Callum Lockie. There in third place is uh, Nigel Greensaw, and in fourth position, Javier Morteo is catching everybody, but he's got not enough time left now, I think, to progress any further. And despite the spin earlier on, Guillaume Grouchet, it looks like he's on for a fifth-place finish in the Newbridge Porsche. Well, after a horrible end to the weekend at Alton Park, it's great to see Alistair Lindsay enjoying his driving and running in a decent third place in Class 3 for Jensen Motorsport. There is the other Ginetta, Stephen Fressel. Looks like he's going to pick up second place, but a long way clear now in the category. That is Kevin Clark. The groundwork was done earlier on by Anna Vlevska. A great effort by the team, and they're in the top six overall as well. But this man has led the race for most of the 90 minutes and he's on course for that team's first outright win of the season. Here's the chequered flag then, the win goes to Callum Lockie. A great drive, great defensive driving as well when he was under pressure from Nathan Freak all the way through the first portion of proceedings. Terrific race then, let's have a look at the results. Round nine of the championship is won by Callum Lockie and FF Course Ferrari. Second place to Nathan Freak in the Ginetta for start racing. Nelson and Greensall round out the top three. Callum, congratulations. Not only are you the overall winner, but class two winner. Uh, how are you feeling right now? Yeah, I know I've done that. It was an hour and a half of, of just keeping it right on the edge. There, there really wasn't any, any more there. It was just you. Did you feel that pressure? How did you pace yourself? Did you have a strategy going into this? I just went as fast as I could. I could see the, this Jeanette up behind me and the, the gap shrunk and grew and shrunk and grew depending on traffic and, and whatever else. So yeah, it was, it was a fantastic race. I mean, FF Course always put out such a fantastic car. It was exactly the same at the end as it was at the beginning. So the guys have done a wicked job, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it was a pretty hard work out there. I did the whole 90 minutes stint, but I believe Callum did too. Um, just couldn't get past him. You know, he's an experienced driver, put his car in places where you know he needed to and made it very difficult for me to get past. Was had probably ultimate pace over him. It's just difficult. So yeah, I'm looking forward to a uh, cold drink when I get back. Congratulations also to Kevin Clark and Anna Valevska who take their first Class 3 win of the year. It's a great, great race. I feel awesome, of course. Um, it's been a great year. We've been consistent, um, but we've just been one step off that podium, whether it's invitation cards coming in or, or what have you. But today, we deserved it, we got it, and I'm so pleased for the team because they worked really hard this year. And so another terrific race draws to a close. Join us again next time when teams from the Brickcar Sports and Touring Car Trophy join the main endurance event right here at Snetterton. Until then, thanks for watching.